here. Let's see what we're doing today. I don't want to be in there. We're still doing the graphing paper stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I forgot about that. That's I brought some graphing paper with me. All right, let's go into here. I've added some things in here too. So when somebody else watches this, they'll be able to see. I I just thought of this the last minute before class. I put up the videos. Mm -hmm. But if you go to this, I'll put them up individually later on. But if you go to this, I believe it'll not only start the video. I meant I didn't mean to put it in there. I want to change something real quick. I didn't mean to do that either. Let's try this again. I can fix that. I don't want it to open up in the same thing because it always screws it up. Now I'll get the names will be better later on, but let's just make sure we can get to it. All right. The reason why this page is the best one to do that has the last one. But if you scroll down here, see this, we're doing four, three and four, four today. These are full length lecture videos uh, when they were made in 2020 when COVID hit in the middle of the semester. So I made these for my students. They're full length videos, they're full length lectures. And I do them on uh, one. I'm not responsible for that. They've put in those things. All right. So you see you got that and you can do all sorts of things with these. I think yeah. my closed caption is fairly close to right. You can do some playback speed. Um, you can change the quality. I think it's as high as it goes for me. It's just, so there's some things you can do. And if you can pause me. One student I thought was funny, they said, they thought I was so boring. They go, you can make it go faster than normal if you want to. Yeah. You <laughs> or you can do this one. <laughs> so I do half when I have to read the screen because I'm such a slow reader. But those are all available to you now. It'll be better looking when I get a chance to individually uh, notice those things. Old test. Let me see if I've got these in here yet. Um, spring 2024. There they are. It's the test and the solutions. See, they're, they're just like I would write them. So they're not. I used to type them out, but I don't think they were as, the students liked them as much. I think I, think I lost half the points just by like not putting negatives. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You'll get better at that as the semester goes on. See what we're doing today. You, we did do four one and four two, I think, last oh. time. So we, yes, yeah, so today is the 29th. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do more graphing stuff. Okay, let's go on into Alex. So is this the easier way of doing it? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're that's exactly right. We're going to be doing um we're gonna start graphing here without doing it in such a slow and painful fashion as before. I'm not sure what these are here. Determine the slope. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, and talk about that then. Let me start my one note.
you have paper? Yes. Ruler? Do you have a ruler? Uh, yeah, I have a ruler. All right, so when we talk about these lines, the biggest thing that we're, one of the biggest things we're going to focus on is they're always going to be straight. That's not a big deal there, but how they're angled. So the steepness of a line is going to come in handy in terms of this. Let me explain how it works. I'm going to, I'm going to draw a line on this page. I'm going to need to accept it with this thing. I don't want that thing. Oh, okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to go here. Um, draw. Give me a line of some sort. I'm gonna make it so it's right on these edges or something so I can see. Let's go through this. Try to go through that too. All right, so I've got a couple of points that I can use, I think. Let me stretch out this end. I'm going to keep it on that point. Stop it there. All right. Look at a point here. Look for another place where it crosses right on a corner spot. Oh, two over three, so this on the line, negative one. What did you say here? Right, negative one, zero. Does look like it, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, fine. We'll do those two as our as our okay. for example. But when you do the slope, you look at the quotient of two things. If we look at going from, I want to go from this point, the left point to the right point. So we're always moving from left to right when we're making this decision. What I need to do is determine how high I go. I don't know what I did. Press the <laughs> Control Z is your friend. I'll try this again. I have no idea what that one is. Sometimes they, these these things become uh, they look dynamic or something. So I want the distance here, this height. They go, well, look at that. So I want that height, and then I want this part. So this part here going up is called the rise. This part here is called the run. So the slope is defined this way. The letter M is always you can put this picture. I don't know why, but it is the rise, the change in the Y values over the change in the X values. And you must proceed from left to right. Now on my graph, I look here, how high did it go from this from the left point, starting at the left point? How high did it go to? When two units up. So it was two, that was the rise was two. How much is the run up? Three. Three. So M equals two thirds is a measure of how steep the line is. That number is bigger, the more vertical the line becomes. 
that number is closer to zero, it's horizontal, more horizontal and negative will angle this way. So positive, zero, negative. Those are the things we're going to focus on. The formula for this as well, if you look right here at this point, it was it was at negative four on a negative two. And this other point here was at uh, negative one comma zero. You can use just those numbers to get the same thing. So we have the first one was negative four, negative two. So we have two points on the line. And I'm going to use the numbers in them. So when I go and construct the M, I'm going to take this Y value minus that Y value. And that tells you how high you went. The highest Y minus the lowest Y. Same thing with the X. The highest X minus the lower X. The top simplifies to two, and the bottom simplifies to three. So either one of these methods will work. You can, if you have a graph in front of you, you can just count your way. If you don't have a graph in front of you, you can use the points like this. We're gonna look at a few of these and try to determine the slopes of these lines, just like what I said. Yeah. Real quick, I don't know just because I keep thinking. Are you doing keep change flip? I don't know what that is. So I'm probably not. <laughs> because what I was, what I was talking, what I was saying, because if it's positive two, keep change flip that pretty much do zero plus positive two. Okay. That's I didn't know if that's what. I think we'll we'll see. Let's let me go ahead and grab another one. So and I what I was telling him when you came in was that we were trying to determine negative versus positive slopes. Let me grab this one here. So we're going to want to determine the slope on this thing uh, over here. Make it bigger so we can all see. All right, so with any line, you need two points that's specified on the line. Right now, they give you one point of negative four, negative one. One way to do the slope, as I was instructing him, is that we have two things. Slope is equal to rise over run. Probably heard of that phrase. So am I in problem over here? Or not? So the slope is M. That's rise divided by run. The rise is how much did you go from the first, the left point to the right point to make yourself a triangle like this. A little right triangle, right? This part here is called the rise. This part here is called the prime. So if you start, how many units did I go up or down here? Two. Since it's angled this way, it's considered negative two. If it was this way, it would be positive two. This is considered negative slope. It's decreasing or negative slope. So instead of two, we're going to put negative two. Now, how far did it go this way from here to here? One, two, three, four. So there's your slope. If you want to simplify it, you can. Check this little thing out. That equals negative one over two. Right, look, look, look. Right here at this spot, if I go up one, I went over two, didn't I? So it simplifies to points on the line. So that, or this is how you can do it graphically or um, using points. So if we use points, uh, that point over there is negative four, negative one. What's the point that's on the y-axis that they have chosen? Negative. 
Negative three. Uh, any any two numbers? Uh, zero to negative three. Zero to negative three. Exactly. So then we can use the slope formula this way. Take the what you do is pick the later x value. So if I pick this one here, negative three minus negative one. Divided by zero minus negative four. Negative three plus one is negative two over positive four. And you see we got the same answer. So formula or the graph. Now the formula is handy if you don't have a graph with you, obviously. Let me write out the formula then. So, so if you have two points on your line that look something like this, I have, let's see, call this one x2, y2. And another one over here might be x1, y1. The formula is given as. Nobody, by the way, nobody knows who chose the letter M for this particular thing. I've seen it connected like a French word for mountain, right? But nobody knows for sure where it came from. The formula here takes this, the rise is the change in the y value. So that's how much you go up or down. And then x2 minus x1 is the amount of x or horizontal that you cover. So the steepness is what it is. If it's a measure of how a line, how steep a line is. So I, I think you can do, I don't think you have a problem. Anybody has a problem actually counting if you have a graph. It's using the formula that we need a little practice with, I think. So let me go ahead and do that. If they have it here, let's see here. Yeah, I'll throw a couple of them up there. As I said, if you wanted to, you could graph this and then do it from the graph. However, if I gave you one that had decimals or something like that, that weren't whole numbers, it, the graph is going to fail you. You know, how did, what'd you get for the first one? Um, one over two. He did it backwards. Is it two over one? Then I think the other one's three over one. You did it back, yep. both of them backwards. The Y is going on the top. So, so on the top, first one, negative three minus one will be on the top. Oh, here's what I've seen some students do in the past with regard to the top. 
it really doesn't matter who's X1 and who's X2 in that formula, as long as they're consistent. So I've seen them do things like this, call this X1, Y1, X2, Y2, like this. They know which one belongs to who. Then when we use the formula, we have the slope in this Y2 minus Y1, or X2 minus X1. So if you look at my little cheat thing up there, I have for my Y's, what is Y2 minus Y1 going to be? Negative 3 minus 4. Negative 3 minus 1, right? And then on the bottom, what's my X2 minus X1 going to look like? 0 minus 2. So this all comes out to be negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is 2. So the second one, did you get that for your round? Six minus three on the top and nine minus zero on the bottom. So three over nine or one. Three over nine, which you can reduce to one over three. Questions about that? Okay. Here. I don't know if I took it or not. I, my finger fell off, slipped off. Okay. Same deal, tell me what you get.
Did you guys see these? These are unusual lines. These are special in the sense that they are like what they call degenerate cases where lines break down. This is exactly the case of the first case. That zero in the denominator means that number is not defined. You can't divide by zero. Try to do nine divided by zero in the calculator, it would give you an error. So this is undefined. You'll find out a line like that is vertical. Think about it for just a minute here. Vertical line goes straight up and down. Doesn't have any run, does it? It's all rise. So this is a vertical, this ends up being a vertical line. And you can see that in your mind, see if you can do this in your mind. If you can put these two points on a graph in your head, you see they stop at the same X value, but they have different Y values, don't they? That means they're arranged like this, right on top of each other. You understand? Try that again. These two points have exactly the same X values. That means we went to negative two, both of them. They're just a different values. But the line that connects them will have no slope because there's no run. It's all rise. This one here is okay because that equals zero. This turns out to be a horizontal line. So when you go to looking at these things, the horizontal goes just from left to right, and vertical goes up and down. So they uh, well, these are two special cases that will have to just keep as special cases. The rest of the time, we'll, we'll, most of all, in very often, but what we do, we need to make sense of them. Not only that, can you tell me if these two lines were together on a picture, on a graph, could you tell if they were intersecting each other at what angle they would intersect? 90 degrees. They're perpendicular to each other. Do you see that? So here, we're recalling a little bit your, your, your ability to, to be able to Imagine graphs is, is going to be helpful. Because uh, you're not, it's not likely that you're going to want to draw a graph every single time for every problem. It, it just is, I don't think, it, I don't think it's reasonable. Here's the ones I was talking about. This is where you wouldn't be able to use a graph to do it. Yeah, the numbers are uglier.
sequences in each step. Make sure all your numbers are in the right places. What'd you get for a, a common denominator in the top? 20. What you want to do is get a fraction divided by a fraction so we can handle it. So yeah, merge those fractions on the top. 20 will work on the top. What about on the bottom? 15? 15. Stop there that you ate the bad step. Wait, that one is in that one good. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 I knew it was. I didn't just didn't put it there. It fixed it later, so I did that. Let me combine everything. Negative 27 over 20 divided by 8 over 15. If you remember, I flipped that bottom one. Remember you reciprocate the bottom fraction. Good, good. Put it in the body. Okay, yeah, you gotta put that bottom upside down. And now I'll simplify to see what if anything simplifies. With that 27, I don't see anything down in the denominator that I can cancel with it. But 15 I do. You see how I can cancel between the 15 fives? Fives so and 15 and 20, right? If I divide 15 by 5, I'll have a 3. 20 by 5, I'll have a 4. And there's nothing else that I can cancel. So the numerator, I'm going to get negative 81. Negative doesn't matter where you put it, but I'll get 81 in the numerator. And the denominator, I'll get 32. So which way is this thing going? Is it angling downward or is it angling upward? Down, downward. It's angling downward as you go. As you proceed from left to right, it's angling downward, increasing. No, I don't think I want any of these things. Now, the slope is, tells us how to graph lines. So let me go ahead and get this and show you how we go about it. So they're going to give us a point, a starting point, if you will. All right, so be prepared to graph. I'm going to lose this book in a second. Um, there, we'll do the first one. If you have a point, remember last time I said, if you have two points, you could draw a line between them. However, if you don't have that, then we need a starting point and a way to move. And the one third tells you how to move. Put it down in here. All right. Here's how it works. I'm going to draw a dot at one, two. Make this bigger to make my dots. All right. So you guys tell me here the bouncing ball is at zero, zero. Tell me how to get to one, two. All right. One, two. 
right one of two. So I'll put a dot here. Okay, there's my straight. Is everybody with me? Now, remember, one over three equals rise versus run. So watch my watch the ball. Okay, from the point I started at, I'm going to rise one, and I'm going to go to the right three and put another dot. If I want to continue in this fashion, what do you think I'm going to do next? I mean, easier to go down one over three. You can do that, yeah. But from this point, I'm going to do a few more over here, and then I'll go backwards. So where would I go next from this guy? What should I do? Up one over three. Up one, you always, up one to the right three. You can see it lined up. Go up one to the right three. Up one to the right three. The longer you make these, the farther apart you have to connect them, the more accurate your graph will be. Now watch this here. Um, All right, so I, I drew, going backwards, you would have to reverse yourself down into the left three, down into the left three. So here's my line, and all you got to do is connect them. So let me draw a line through all of these things, and that's all that they're looking for. So you can start here at this end. Like I said, the farther away your line is, the better, more, oh, are you serious? I don't want that thing. Why would it be so fast? Now, I have extensive difficulties with this going where I want it to until it, like, gives in or something. Still bigger than I want it to be. Oh, that one looks. That could, yeah, that's good enough. All right, so this is all they're expecting you to do. So you, what did you have here? You had a starting point, then it told you how to go from there. You understand? Starting point, and then it tells you how to go from there. So realistically, if you have a starting point and it tells you how to move from there, you technically do get a second point out of that, don't you? Once you go up one into the right three, you're at another point. So you could use the formula at that point if you wanted to. All right, let me go ahead and give you another one. So same deal. It's going through a given point, and you want to graph the line that works. I think I've, I've indicated you, you guys all have graph paper? Yeah. When you take the test, I will insist that you use some sort of a straight edge. I don't want you to draw free-handed lines.
it's still thick. Okay. All right. How did you start your graph? Anybody can tell me. Either one of you is fine. Where did you start at? Negative five zero. So and I'm at the origin. Where did you go? Over to the left five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then after you've got that point laid down, what do you do? How much up what? How much? Two. So I go up two, one, two, and then to the right five. One, two, three, four, five. That's right on there, isn't it? Yep. Do it again. Rinse and repeat. Two, three, four, five. And I'll go ahead and draw a line through them. Yeah, there's no rule on this. You can just do as much as you need. Um, lay down enough points to get the job done. There's no real need to um, go crazy. Let's keep this one here. Come on, get on it. There you go. I think I, had, I almost had it. There's your way out. Hmm. Not exactly happy with that, but whatever. It, it shows what we need to show. Um, you guys have a picture like this? Yep. Both of them get this one? Okay, good. So the goal here is then, well, whatever we're going to do next, we're going to try to get this much information from whatever we do, okay? So let me grab 58 and then 60 so that we can take care of the special cases. Did you start from that point there? How did you proceed from there? Just one straight on. It's not vertical. Is it horizontal? Yep, it's horizontal. It's negative two sticks. Think of this as zero over one, for example. Okay. So if I did zero over one, that means I would do no rise, but I'd go over one, wouldn't I? Zero over one, no rise over one. Horizontal line. So undefined this vertical? That's right. Let me make this a little uh, less thick. So, did it take my shape off? I think it did. So yeah, just a horizontal line. And notice where it goes through to on the graph. This Y value is the same as this Y value here. See that? It went through negative two, didn't it? So it's a horizontal line. 
and then 60 will be a vertical line like you as you expect So this one here, do you see where I put my first point? I just went to the right two, and then I just need a vertical line through it. And there you go. Are there any questions? So we've got all the special cases taken care of. The regular lines will be angled regularly. These two are unusual lines. They're perpendicular to each other. Keep that in mind. That's the word we use when they meet at 90 degrees. Have you ever heard the phrase perpendicular? Okay, I got everything good. I did everything here. Now we'll go to the next. The slope intercept form of the line, perhaps the most useful to students is this particular form. Let's pick one here. I lost my connection, sorry. Yeah, all well done. I, I don't know if you were what you were doing, but it's, I want to graph it is what I want to do. Okay. So actually put that there's instructions ahead of it so we know what we're doing here. Back here. Is, is it negative one on the X or the Y on the set? Let me I'll be back to that in a question. Yeah, in a question <laughs> in a second. <laughs> or is that a problem at? Four. Okay, so it's problem number four. Let me see what it says. Information dial. So each of these equations will get, allow us to graph a line out of them. All right, so we have equations are given in slope intercept form. I will explain slope intercept form after I do something in here. You remember the first day that we did this graphing, I made a, a chart of X and Y values. Do you remember that? Oh, 
over the table that looked like this. Remember? Like the two different values to get a graph. So do you remember what values they chose to make it really easy? Zero. Zero. If I choose X for zero, would you be able to tell me what Y would be using this equation? Negative one. Negative one. Do you see that? If X is zero, seven fifths times zero is zero. The Y is negative one. Now, suppose Y is equal to zero. We do now. I've got to make it X equal one. So if I let Y equal zero, let me do this. For Y equal to zero, here's what I have. So add one. So I have zero here. And I have seven fifths X minus one. You said add one? You're solving this? Yeah, I'm with you. And now what would you do? Um, by each side by five seven. Sorry, it's all by each side by five seven. Oh, so y equals five or x equals five seven. That's right. Down another photo. What are we? These will all cancel out the numbers. Well, the only problem is it's not graphical. Yeah. I can do that. I can do that. But we have the, this this five seven is not good. Yeah. I'll tell you a good number today. You tell me why it's a good number then. I'm going, because I can pick whatever I want. My next number that I'm going to pick will be x equals 5. Do you see at all why that's such a good choice? I chose five because it would cancel with the denominator of five. Give me another point you could choose. Another value of x, for example, that would be clean, like this. Remember, you're going to replace x with this number, right? You put a seven in that spot, you're going to have 49 over five, which is not a good number. Give me something to put in for X that would clean it up. Remember, when I put in five for X, it wiped out the fives. Give me another number that will accomplish something like that. Is it negative eight? Or is that, or negative you need eight? five to go into the number. Oh, so pick something that is a multiple of five. Why not 10? I don't get it. Why not negative 5? You have lots of choices available to you. I'll pick 10 just because I want three points. So when x equals 10, I mean, y equals 7 fifths times 10 minus 1. I put 10 over 1 so it would be compatible with multiplication of fraction. This will cancel. And you'll have 13 y. So you have to do this sometimes if you want good clean points to work with. You can just use the, the slope to graph out where you want to leave. Well, the whole thing about it is this whole exercise is to show you how the slope is related to the equation. Okay. So don't. you know, you, you sound like you know that seven fifths is a slope and you know that. Yeah. That's going from the from the perspective of you not knowing that. And I'm going to show you how we get it. Okay. So let me go ahead and start to graph this with this. I got three pieces of information I'm going to use, these three. And let's go ahead and set up a graph. First of all, let me check my thickness. That's good. I need to make it big, I think. Not that big, maybe. I'll see how big it is. Make it. I know I've got to accommodate 10 and 13 and stuff like that, so I think it needs to be big enough to handle all that. All 
All right, so let's go ahead and graph these points. I got zero, negative one. Let me go ahead and put that in. All right, so zero, negative one is simply down one unit. Are you guys with me? Oh, there we go. All right, next then, five, six. So let me get to that one. I go over one, I go to the right, one, two, three, four, five, but then I go up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then finally, 10, 13 was supposed to be on here as well. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 13. I hope I don't run out of graph. And then I've got to go up. I did, I did that wrong, didn't I? No, I didn't. I, I, I think, is that 10 right there? Yeah. Okay. Then I got to go up 13. All the way up here. Man. What about, you only need two of them anyways. Uh, let me draw a line through this to make sure it actually, th th these three points are correct. So I'm going to go back to normal thickness and I'll draw a line through this. To these two points. And I'll continue on to the third one to make sure everything's right. They all line up. You see that? Yeah. Now let's use the formula to get the slope. I'll use these two points, this one here and this one here as my points. So the one was zero, negative one, and the other is five, six. This point here is five, six. This point down here is zero, negative one. So according to the slope, I take y2, minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And as you do, that's our slope. So if you look at the equation itself, the slope is actually listed for you. Look right here in the in the in the line. See the slope right here? Seven fifths is the number that appears in front of the X. So long as Y is solved for it, you understand? So there's the slope. And not only that, this tells you even more. It tells you where to start. This negative one corresponds to this point down here. Remember when you X equals zero, you got Y was equal to negative one. That's the Y intercept. So here's the, we're gonna graph these things. When I'm given one of these in slope intercept form, I'm gonna use my starting point and then from there, I'm going to use the slope to build my line. Okay. When the slope is negative, remember it decreases, it goes downward. So now we're doing it the other way. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to draw the graph as well. That's, well, yeah, they want you to use the slope to draw the graph. In this problem, can you tell me what point you started at? Oh, I was looking to zero. Not quite. You got it backwards. 
test stuff every time. Remember this. Look, look. Oh, okay. Right, let, right. Let, if you let x equals zero, you'll get y equals two. Yeah, that's yeah. So that'll help you orient yourself that way. Yeah, it's zero to this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So thick my line is. Okay. So this is the way it intersects the y-axis. That's right. This is known as the y-intercept. This piece right here tells you what it is. There's a technical point I'll make in a minute, but it, it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, all right, let's see what we had here. Let me go and put the initial point down, and you tell me if this is the same place that you had it. So here's my point. Zero two is from this. This right here tells us the y-intercept. So I'm going to go starting at the origin. I'm simply going to go up two places. There's zero two. I'll mark. I'll, I'll label that in a minute. Now that you have that, that tells you an initial point. This slope right here tells you how to proceed. Now, how do you go with a negative one third slope? Right one over down. Oh, right one down three. Try it. I did it. Down one. Now, I'll tell you what, if you want to make life easier on yourself, do this. Let Y control the up or down portion, okay? Okay, I, well, I did down one over three. So what I'm saying is this. Yeah, down one and then to the right three. Yeah, and I did that, but for some reason this was fine. Remember, negative is a, is a down and to the right. Positive is up and to the right. You're always going rightward, always. Right for run. Yeah, you're always going along the run. I always, yeah. yeah. And I'll reverse myself up one to the left three. Up one to the left three. So we've got this y-intercept of 0, 2. Oh, by the way, they have this x-intercept. That's not reflected in this, by the way. So we're not looking for that. Starting point will be the y-intercept, and then the, the way you proceed is based on the slope. It's here. The y intercept occurs at zero two. And the slope is that thing out front. The x the prohibition, if you will. That's our slope. So we saw earlier if I had a point and a slope, I can construct the line. And that's what they were getting at this whole time. Let me do. The general form, let me write up the general format. So the full figure step form will look like this. Y will be solved for, and you'll have MX plus B. So M is the slope. And then zero comma b is the y intercept. Any questions about that? Let me see if there's anything weird in here that will get to us. Well, actually, I think I know something that's weird uh, that'll probably be in there. Here, this guy here. Let's see what we got here. Now look here at the screen, if you don't mind. 
I will never give you ones that started something like that. I don't I have no idea what they were thinking when they put these up. Maybe they were expecting you to make four grids per one, but I'm not going to give you that. Now, let's get ones that are in different formats. So let's go and look at 18. All right, I put a little instruction here for you. The slope intercept form is an extraordinarily useful format. When you're given an equation like this, all you need to do is solve for y. Isolate y and you will have the slope intercept form. So look at this equation here. What do I want to do to get y by itself? Subtract x by both sides. Subtract x from both sides. And divide by you know, both sides. Sorry. So subtract x from both sides, just like you said. I can't really combine these, so the best I have right now is 2y equals negative 8 well, minus x. Okay, that's, then I'll divide by 2. Yeah. I'm going to rewrite it, and then we'll see it just a minute when I mean. That's how I was thinking that. What I did is I used the old fraction ability this. I have negative 8 minus x over 2. You're allowed to break it up with negative 8 over 2 minus x over 2. So that's how I get the negative 4 and I get the 1 half x. It's better to put that with 1 half because you'll be able to read it instead of it. Oh, yeah. I did the same thing. It's a negative 1 half. Yeah, yes. negative 1 half minus 4. Right. That oh, minus okay. 4. Okay, yeah. I just put it in the order I like it in. See, oh, okay. I was looking at the one on the right. This is what we want then. So where am I going to start the graph at? What point? Negative four is there's zero negative four. Zero negative four. Then how am I going to proceed? Uh over one down two. Or no, I do I always mess it up. So it's it's over down two over no. one. No. Down one. And then over to two. the right two. Oh yeah. See what I you know how it was fun. I told you earlier in the semester we had to keep track of left and right. Now when we grow up and down in the business, it doubly complicates it. So let me get my graph in here a bit. Don't the small. Okay. Rise over run. Yes, rise over run. So down one, right two. Correct. What is it? All right, let's see what we have here. Um, there's my, okay, so let me go ahead and put the points in. All right, so this tells us to start at zero, negative four. So you said, and you just go down four units, right? Yeah. I'll put my dot in there. I can get it on the spot. All right, after I have the negative one fourth specified, you said I go down one. Go right two. To the right two. Check this out. If you wanted to save yourself some time, negative one half is the same as negative five tenths, right? I could go down five, one, two, three, four, five, and then to the right ten. And of course, you can reverse them the other way. I just wanted a far away point so I could draw into it. Uh, let me get my size of my thing fixed. 
I'm pretty sure we hit most of every kind of situation you can run into, but when you do the homework, I'm sure you'll let me know on Tuesday if I did not cover everything necessarily. All right, so to, to get Y, to get the slope intercept form, what do you need to do? Three words, solve for Y. You understand? Solve for Y is the magic trick to get what you want. All right, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for the class. Sure thing. I'm gonna make up your homework, I forgot to. See ya. Sure, you too.